Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. I also want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders, a great millstone, which do rule well through the Holy Spirit. Much peace, much blessings, and safety unto you, elect across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. I am the priest Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas branch, and I'm coming to you all with another lesson, which is inspired by the Holy Spirit. And Lord willing, this lesson here will be edifying unto the flock. And the name of the Heavenly Father is the name Yahweh, the name of the beloved, only begotten Son. His real name is Yahweh Shai. And I was just pondering a few things as I was doing a little bit of studying today. You know how you read. It starts to unlock those spiritual juices once you study and once you get in the word. So I was just reading a, a little bit of this, a little bit of that earlier. And I caught myself pondering or thinking how grateful that we are out of all the abundance of people that I hear. I mean, you have literally over seven billion people on the face of this earth. And out of those seven billion people, you have a cluster of them that are Israelites that make up a large portion of that number. But out of this large cluster of individuals who the Lord created to be Israelites, out of that large number, it's only been a small few people, a remnant, that the Heavenly Father had chose to disperse this knowledge unto. So to literally be a possessor of the knowledge of heaven and earth is a very big deal. And I mentioned it in a lesson that I did a few days ago. I touched up on how it's easy to take for granted what we've been blessed with and what we understand. And in that lesson, I, it was a testimony going into how the Heavenly Father used tribulation to allow me to minister to a new believer in a position, in a place that I would have never thought I would have ministered, ministered to a brother to. You know, so just going into that lesson, I made mention how we literally can easily overlook what we've been given and that's this knowledge okay and the lord hath given us this knowledge i said hath like i'm reading the scriptures but y'all know what i mean but the lord gave us this knowledge right before the end came the heavenly father chose to give us this knowledge right before the end came which shows you that we could very well be of that number and being of that number possibly that means that we were created before the foundations of the earth and actually ruled with Yahweh Shai in the heavens before everything was created. You know, and that's a very big deal. That's a very heavy thing. The fact that the Lord chose to give us this information and teach this information before the end came. You know, when a scripture actually comes to mind and I didn't even have the scripture written down within my notes. But when you read Revelation, the seventh chapter, which that revelation was given unto our beloved forefather, the apostle John, the revelator who received a series of visions as he was held prisoner in the island of what's called Patmos. But when you read this here in the book of Revelation, the seventh chapter, and you start from the top, it says, and after these things, and this is an entrance, by the way, so I'm doing some writing so the reading might not be as fluent because, of course, I got to pay attention to the road. But hey, man, Yahweh Shah got the will. But after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And these winds are going into the destruction that the Heavenly Father is getting ready to unleash, that he's going to allow his beloved son, Yahweh and the angels to unleash on this place. And you got all these people that walk around in their pride. They live their lives thinking that they can't be touched by the Lord. And they think, a lot of them think that they have victory on this side. Okay, you might be in a situation where you're struggling and you got these people that are out here that are just winning on this side. And, and even Asaph, when you read it in the book of Psalms, chapter 73, even Asaph took up the same complaint that he was envious of the godly because of the way that they would prosper on this side. You know, he said he was envious at it. But you read it in the book of Second Ezra, and I'm going to try to quote it the best that I can. But it goes into not worrying about and seeking the glory of that's on this side. I believe that's in 2nd Ezra, the 7th chapter. And Lord willing, the Spirit will have me uh, post that precept here. But he goes not into seeking glory, 
that's on this side for the glory that's on this side is only temporary but our glory is eternal and what starts with our glory is having this knowledge what starts with us having glory on this side and these wretched ailment ridden bodies is having this knowledge okay that's the glory that we have through Yahweh Shai Mashiach we've been given the Holy Spirit which is a form of glory that we've received on this side all right because again having the Holy Spirit you have information that's from the heavens that only a small remnant have received all right and with this understanding with this wisdom we've been given grant or granted testimony to testify of our Lord Yahweh Shai openly that way we will be able to be saved from the said perils that the scriptures talks about that's going to come so this knowledge that we have literally has saved us you know it literally saved us which makes sense why the apostle paul made mention i believe it's in romans the 10th chapter where he said even if you confess yahweh shai you're saved but what comes with confessing yahweh shai it comes with a testimony that has to be given it comes with a lifestyle that you're going to have to live you living in straits constantly and if you endure to the end you're going to be saved but having this testimony and this knowledge, that's going to be the driving force to allow you to continue pushing when things get grim and look dark. All right. That's the life that we've been given on this side where death is flourishing. And we're going to really appreciate it more and more as we see the days prolong, things get worse. We're going to really appreciate this knowledge that we've been given. So when you continue in Revelation, the seventh chapter, hold on. Revelation seven and two. And it says, and I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. Hold on. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, which he was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God and their foreheads. And when you continue to read it, it goes into the hundred and forty four thousand Israelites, twelve thousand out of each tribe. Minus the tribe of Dan because they've been dispersed into the rest of the tribes of Israel But these hundred and forty four thousand Israelites were going to have the testimony sealed within them All right, even then you read it in the book of James Matter of fact, let's get this here This is the book of James chapter 1 verse 21 Because even the apostle James goes into this here Which this James is the brother of our Lord Yahweh Shai. This James was called James the Just when you read him in the scriptures. This is the biological brother of our Lord Yahweh Shai. Okay? So it says, this is the book of James, chapter 1, verse 21. Matter of fact, I'm going to start at verse 20. It says, For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of the Most High. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluidity of naughtiness. All right? It says, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. So just as it was read earlier in Revelation, the seventh chapter, where it was commanded to the angels not to hurt the earth, nor the sea, nor the trees, to the seal of the living God was sealed in the foreheads of the elect. That's the same thing here in James 1, that engrafted word that is able to save our souls. And again, we're going to really appreciate this engrafted word. I mean, we appreciate it now. Which is why we do what we do. But when things start to collapse more, all right, when things start to look a lot more grim, we're going to appreciate how the Heavenly Father has given us this engrafted word and the faith to be able to um, endeavor, all right, or experience, I'd rather say, or conquer these endeavors that we deal with every day. Even within the past few years, you remember two years ago when it was made mandatory for every job, for every job to make mandatory. For all the employees, if it's employee, if, if, if it's a company that had over 100 people, it was made mandatory for every employee to roll their sleeves up. And there was a lot of people that was around you, that was around me, that was around all of us, that was compromising. And these are people that said that they believed in God. These are people that said that they had some type of faith and whatever the case is. And they literally, with their naughtiness and with their lack of of faith you even had a lot of people trying to justify themselves getting that jab and they tried to say they did it because they had faith tried to turn it around but for those of us that didn't adhere to that and that stood our ground and continued to contend for the faith you know 
there was a reward that came and that reward was the simple fact that they weren't even allowed doing it and they took that right or that law out of the equation so you had people that considered themselves to be believers that considered themselves to be christians and such allow east or to compromise their integrity and they still ended up doing doing it and right afterward that law got declined anyway so you had people that claim to believe that got the serpent's venom in them anyway and that's flowing through their veins and they willingly did that just as they're going to willingly take that sea hip so right there is an example of the lord rewarding us for our faith and that's an example that I like to use because it's an example that the masses of us can relate to. Okay? That's an example that the masses of us can relate to. And the Lord lifted up a standard. So just imagine when more heavier laws and restrictions are going to get put in place. Because the scriptures does talk about them heavier laws getting put in place. Revelation the 13th chapter goes into that. But our faith is going to keep us whole. And the reason why we have this faith is because we have been given this engrafted word or the seal of the living God within our foreheads. And that's going to be able to deliver us before the day of doom when that comes. All right. So I wanted to talk about that and I'm going to go to another precept. This scripture in James just came to mind. All right. Because if you put all these rudiments of the world away and you start walking after righteousness, you start walking after chastity and such, can't nothing phase you. Even the hell that you go through, the hell that you catch, you're going to be irritated and complain to the Lord occasionally, but that's not going to even phase you. But more so, that's going to fuel you to want to serve the Lord even more. However you serve the Lord, whether it's you being a, a, a teacher or a prophet and that's teaching the word, or you being a help and helping, whatever portion the Lord gave you, you're going to continue to flourish in that and give diligence within that because you believe. And again, that's that engrafted word that we've been given. Something, a gift or a present that we've been given right before the end. Okay? The Lord gave us this knowledge right before the end. That way we can be saved and those can be saved by the words of our testimony. That way the Father and the Son can be glorified in these bodies. Alright? The Heavenly Father had a way for His name and His beloved Son's name to be glorified on the earth before the end. There's another scripture that comes to mind here. Let's get it. Bear with me one sec. But I'm going to read this here in the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 8. And hold on. I got to type this in. So this is in the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 8. And I believe it starts at verse um, 61. Okay. And when you read this chapter, especially chapter 7 and 8 in 2nd Ezra, you know, you notice, um, even when you read that book, you notice a pattern of Ezra constantly inquiring to the Lord about the well-being of the nation of Israel, how they were low, how they were stricken. And when you read this chapter, the Lord, which was speaking through the angel Uriel, was telling Ezra, look, man. Don't even worry about them that's going to die. Don't worry about the wicked Israelites that are doing wickedness because Ezra was worried about it all, the righteous and the wicked. And the Lord had to remind Ezra, look, don't worry about these guys. They, their fate's sealed. All right, the Lord ain't dealing with them. And he uses a different number or a large number. Well, I don't want to say a large number, but you find a pattern of him constantly having to talk to Ezra and give him parables and similitudes. That way he would have a grand understanding of why the Lord is doing what he's doing. You know, and us here in these last days, I mean, quite frankly, we see the works of wickedness, the fruits of it, and how these people don't got it. So Ezra's mindset back then was, Lord, can you save these the, the Israelites that are even wicked? And our mindset's like, man, the Lord's just going to kill them. You know, but we're at the very end, and we know, hey, as the scripture say in Daniel 12, knowledge will be increased. And part of that knowledge being increased is the reality that the masses of these Israelites are just going to die. And the Lord is only dealing with a small remnant that's going to get it. That's why you also read it in Ezra where he tells them, look, don't worry about the multitude that's going to perish, but rather worry about those that are going to be saved. And again, he uses a lot of analogies and parables and such to really tackle the point. And he explains it in a way that Ezra will understand because he was a mere mortal man, just like the rest of, just like the rest of us that's here hastening the day. 
So just to give you that quick abridgment as that was read, and I'm going to just jump straight to this here in 2nd Ezra 8 and 61. And it says, and therefore is my judgment now at hand. And he told that to Ezra 2,500 years ago. So how much more do you apply it now? Again, when we read these scriptures, we got to read it understanding that this is speaking to us right now, like ASAP, not ASAP, but it's the word that I'm looking for, you know, pretty much right now in this day and age, a warning to us right now, the judgment's at hand. And when he continue, it says, these things have I not shown unto all men. You see that? So it makes sense why when you're out there on the highways, people don't get it. It makes sense why even certain family members and relatives and friends that you wanted to tell and they didn't get it. It makes perfect sense. And we understand why those of us that have been in this thing in some time. But for those of you all that are newer coming in, you know, you're trying to teach people and it'll vex you and anger you because they don't get it. But when you let the Lord take control and when you start growing and understanding, you know that it's not meant for them to get it, to get it. And that's the reality of it, man. You trying to tell a regular Israelite that's out here that doesn't have the spirit of the Lord, the secrets of the most high. That's like trying to explain to them a new color that you've seen that they've never seen before. When you look at the color green, yellow, orange, you can immediately think of those colors in mind. But you try to explain to somebody that's never seen the color red or the color orange, you can explain to them in the detail, the fluorescence of it, you know, the, the, the way it looks when the light hits it, but they're not gonna be able to get it because that's something that they haven't seen and experienced. And that's the same thing when it comes to the majority of our people. They don't got it. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai just, had it, just has it, has it said, I'd rather say, where he doesn't want them to understand. They're going to understand it in the kingdom. And we don't know the exact details, 100% of why the Heavenly Father has it that way. But rather just be grateful in the fact that you have the understanding and they don't. Okay, that's something to be grateful at. Call Halal Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, 144. I'm in the road. And there's a, a car that I'm just passing by that has 144 on a license plate. And the Lord always sends us those reminders, those glimpses of hope to build up our faith, you know. But I'm going to continue to read this here. This is back in 2nd Ezra 8 and 62. It says, These things have I not shown unto all men, but unto thee, and a few like thee. And it goes on to say, Then Ezra, I'm sorry, then answered I and said, you know, and he's going to, he's going to give the answer, but the point was going into what the Lord or with the angel Uriel, which was the messenger of the Lord, is the messenger of the Lord, spoke unto Ezra pretty much saying, look, don't worry about them. They're not going to get it. But be grateful, in fact, that these things have been shown unto you because they ain't been shown unto all men. You have people that are out here living large. People like Andrew Tate, which calls, which he calls himself the top G, which whatever with that shit, you know? Hey, the top G is Yahweh Shai. But, you know, I get it. But dude got it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, whatever. But hey, the scriptures say not many wise men, not many mighty men, not many noble are called. But the most high have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. <laughs> I caught myself thinking earlier today as I was on my way to work, just certain occurrences that happened at camp. When people come by and talk mess, I remember there was one guy that came up. It was Issachar, just in a folly spirit, you know, and yeah, he got rebuked. But his response was, man, this guy got to, has to get laid. You know, and yeah, in a comical sense, it was funny, you know, but hey, man, you know, again, people would rather laugh at that than look at the seriousness of the matter. But the reason why I'm using this as an example, it had me thinking like out of all these things happening on the earth, out of all the wisdom that the Lord is showing and revealing, you got people that are still in this state of folly. And that's because it has not been given unto them. All right. And we're fools for Yahweh Shai's sake. So us being the guys on the highways and the garments, getting on people, rebuking the city, preaching the gospel, that's looked at in the eyes of mere modern men as foolishness. But that just is what comes with having the secrets of the Lord and his knowledge is likened unto the world as foolishness, which is also why they got to die. It's also written of in Second Ezra going into those Israelites, by the way, that do wickedly. It mentions that they say in their minds, I'm sorry, they say outwardly that he is not. You know, and they might not necessarily say it with their mouths that he is not and that he is not. It's talking about the most high, but they say he is not. But I always say this here. Actions speak louder than words, you know, so their actions will show forth that they don't have faith. Their actions, the things that they say, the things that they do 
outwardly show forth that they don't believe that there's actually a higher power that's dealing with Israel. You know, in the following chapter in 2nd Ezra 8, it's a precept to it. It say that they didn't retain the knowledge of the most high in their minds. Okay, so knowing this, that they must die. So these people that are out here in a state of folly, look at us like we're crazy and such. They're going to die at the end of the day. And again, be grateful the Lord chose to send the Holy Spirit, this comforter, unto you. Because it couldn't have been given to anybody. But he chose to allow you to be one of those individuals that possess the Holy Spirit. ha Kodash. All right. And just as it's written up in the book of Amos, the third chapter, and I'm going to quote it, but it says, The Most High doeth nothing. But he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. All right. And that nothing is going into the fact that the Lord ain't going to allow judgment to happen like it was read in Second Ezra. I'm sorry. Revelation seven. How I was commanded to the angels to hurt not the earth, nor this, that and the third until the seal was sealed in those servants. All right. That engrafted word being sealed in those servants. So back in Amos three, it says the most High will do nothing. But he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. That literally means he ain't going to allow the heavy portion of judgment to be done until the servants are sealed. And we're coming to that point where the servants are being sealed and be grateful that you've been called into this ministry to be a partaker within this sealing. You know, it's something that can be easily overlooked, man. But this knowledge that we have is big and we're going to really appreciate it. We appreciate it now, but we're going to appreciate it even more when that time comes. So I'm going to end it off on that. Lord willing, this was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessing, and salutation unto you, elect, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. Shalom.